So today I will talk to you about the all on X concept. We'll review relevant clinical anatomy and I'll share with you a few clinical cases. By no means is this meant to be an in instructional video as to how to place all on fours, zygomas or pterygoids, but it's more about looking at uh, cases and understanding what is actually possible so that we save the patients a lot of time. Now, if a case is successful with all on four or zygoma or pterygoid, and the patient has a great quality of life, you would have given this patient the ability to save at least one year and have immediate function. I would say that many all on four clinicians or surgeons around the world or prosthodontists around the world who perform this procedure are extremely delighted to be able to see a patient smile on the same day of surgery and suddenly it has changed their way of living in terms of how people perceive them socially, how they actually go out they, by putting on even a lipstick or changing even their clothes. Uh, as part of the Nuffield Dental strategy of how we manage our patients, the patients are all routinely sent to a counselor for, uh, to discuss potential aspects of their life they might have been unhappy about. We also send our, our patients to uh, a coach. A coach will even look at image and, and see whether the patient actually can be improved upon in terms of their dressing, their hair, uh, even their, the spectacles they use, because we want to make this a life-changing experience. Then speak to you about uh, some clinical cases which are very interesting. Uh, this is Dr. Paolo Malo, a dear friend, and uh, I've met him uh, very, very early on in my career. So I qualified in dentistry in 2001, and I did medicine in 2006. By 20. 22008 and 9, I was already starting to get bored of routine implants. And you would say, how do you get a chance to actually practice routine implants during medical school? There was some time on weekends and whilst, you know, being a poor medical student, we had to earn some money on our own. And this is where I developed a huge love for implants. And I decided to go and find my education on my own. And I visited Dr. Paolo Malo's uh, huge establishment in Portugal, Lisbon in 2008. And at that point of time, um, I was told Dr. Malo wasn't actually going to be around for the surgery. So I went back again into 2009. And at that point of time, I did my first all on four case thereafter. And with his protocol, uh, my scope of dentistry that I practice has been very, very different. Uh, my first patient was my mother. And interestingly, Dr. Malo's first patient as well was his mother. And it's thanks to this gentleman who created the protocol which is now used uh, around the entire world globally. And what's, what we take for granted now is one of the biggest contributions to dentistry that we have seen in our generation. The all on four concept, as you know, is the rehabilitation using four implants for either the upper or the lower jaw with the posterior implants both being tilted to avoid important anatomical sites. In the upper jaw, we tend to avoid the sinus. And of course, in the lower jaw, we avoid the mental nerve. So what are the principles for all on X? Now, we would typically be using four to six implants for full arch rehabilitation. We try not to place implants in the posterior regions because we know that bone is typically disappears very rapidly in the atrophic mandible and even in the maxilla. And you will see this very clearly in the patients that come of the senior ages, okay? We will tilt the posterior implants up to 45 degrees. And for some of us who are used to using surgical guides, uh, we certainly can make these things beforehand to aid the surgery in terms of precision, how you want to deliver the prosthesis to your patient as well. It can be prepared beforehand. Uh, we all know that cantilevers aren't great, but however, cantilevers are allowed if you used up to one or 1 1.5 uh, pontics posterior to the last implant. Uh, many of us would like to place a, a fixed acrylic bridge on the same day of surgery. We call it immediate function. And the minimum amount of torque you need on your implants, at least 35 newtons before you load your implants. You can do this with the flapped or a flapless approach. I tend to do mine with a flapped approach. I tend not to use a surgical guide. I tend to go by feel and understanding the anatomy. I like to plan using a CT scan. Now, whilst I'm saying all of this, please don't disregard all the tools and toys we have of these days because these are all there to aid our planning. Now, it's very important that you are able to drive a manual car despite you driving an automatic car. An automatic car is great to drive, but sometimes we have, you may have to go back to a manual car. And when you do, you say, thank goodness, I know how to drive a manual car. So with that, that is the principle of all on four. Let's talk about the various zones of the atrophic maxilla. Now, as the maxilla uh, undergoes atrophy, especially when patients start losing their teeth, 
we divide the, the maxilla into different zones. If you look at zone one, you can see here just between the sinuses and so this from zone one to zone two, it's usually where the canine is on both sides. And zone two would typically be where the premolars would be. And zone three would typically be where the second molar would be. Now, what's important in this slide? Now you can see here a few implants that have been tilted in strange positions. So let's look and see what sort of implants have been placed. Over here, you can see straightforward implants being placed in zone one because it's adequate bone. Zone two, you can see, or even in zone one, you can see a tilted implant, which is not the typical sort of a configuration you'd expect. You'd see over here, this is a different sort of configuration, but it is okay as long as you have bicortical fixation. With the use of multi-unit abutments, you can actually correct the, the position of your uh, restorative platform. And of course, if you have a lack of bone in zone two, then you would then start thinking of things like um, zygomas, zygomatic implants. Now, typically when we, patients don't have uh, bone in zone three and zone two, whilst a zygoma seems to be the immediate option, we can consider other um, tools in our momentarium. There's still many other things that we will not discuss in this, this lecture, of course. There are uh, cortically fixed plates that we could use. And now we have, uh, with the Norris Medical, Armamentarium, we have pterygoid implants, which we can place and still allow our patients to have full function on the same day. Take home message from this slide. There are three major zones in the atrophic maxilla. If you have sufficient bone across zone one, two, and three, you will place implants conventionally. If you don't have implants in zone three, you will place a conventional all on four. If you don't have, if you don't have bone in zone two and zone three, you will consider the use of zygomatic implants. And in the case of patients who don't even have bone in zone one, you will have to use, if the patient wants, of course, a quad zygoma or what we call a double zygoma technique to rehabilitate the patient.